Reading vlog time! Hey guys, what's up? It's Dom. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I typically make bookish content, travel content when there's not a pandemic, and miscellaneous collection content. Today's bookish content because we're continuing my Twilight series. I am rereading the books right now so I can read Life and Death and then so I can get ready for Midnight Sun and then watch the movies. I am currently rereading New Moon by Stephanie Meyer and yes, I cheated. I've already started reading it. Um, this is the only copy, only copy of my Twilight books that has the movie cover and not the original cover and it really, really bothers me. It's also the most damaged for some reason. I haven't read this series since I was in 7th grade. I was in 7th grade between 2009 and 2010, so we're pushing like 10, 11 years ago. Reading Twilight was an adventure. New Moon I know is going to be better because when I was younger, unpopular opinion, but when I was younger, New Moon was actually my favorite in the series. And I don't really know why, I don't remember. Maybe it'll change now that I'm rereading. But then the first book, Twilight itself, was actually my least favorite of the series. So I don't know, hopefully I could figure it out if it if that preference changed or not. Also before I go on I want to talk about the Quilute tribe which is the Native American tribe that was represented in the series but represented terribly. Stephanie Meyer butchered the culture. The tribe does not like the series at all because it was it just wasn't good representation. They also need to move to higher ground so I will leave the link to where you can donate to them if you can. If you cannot please share the link so others can see it so that's just that you can bring awareness. So, New Moon takes place after Bella's junior year of high- I almost said college. So New Moon takes place after Bella's junior year of high school and after that summer. So it's currently September of her senior year. It's her birthday. She's in mourning because she's 18 now. She's a mere, mere year older than Edward and she's freaking out. And part of me wants to tell her, girl, it's just a year. There's no big deal. But also another part of me relates to her because like as soon as I find out a guy is like maybe five months younger than me, Five months younger or more, I'm just like, uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, we're not gonna work out. So I, I kind of relate to her in that sense. I know it's kind of petty, but granted, I don't think I would be as sad as she is. She is so melodramatic about the fact she's 18 now. She won't let anyone mention her birthday. She's mad because Alice is throwing a party. Boo hoo, be fucking happy, be fucking grateful. Alice is just doing what she does best. Um, and it's only Edward, it's only Edward and Alice at school. Everyone else has graduated, or graduated, but they're off to college. In reality, they're just staying home. And they're excited to throw her a party because they have not thrown a real party until Emmett's birthday in 1935. So Edward's like, for the love of God, Bella, be a good sport. And Bella's like, fine. And at this party, there's a bunch of, pre there's a bunch of presents and Bella's like, please. I don't want them and she's like I thought I said no presents and Alice is like yeah but I didn't listen so I folded that page down um if you remember from the Twilight vlog like I folded down my favorite pages the beginning of this book does not have any except for that one they all come at the end we've already reached a part where Bella cut her finger on wrapping paper which I'm still wondering how the fuck she did that and now Edward, you know Edward did the thing where he pushed her made the cut worse because now she has a whole slice on her arm from being in glass and now there's ravenous vampires staring at her. I always thought that was hilarious like obviously it was like unintentional because he was kind of just trying to get her out of Jasper's grasp but it's like you saved her by making the blood worse and I always thought that was funny. Yeah so Jasper's hungry because she got an open wound but yeah to this day I'm still like how how clumsy are you that you cut yourself on wrapping paper? Wrapping paper is one of the only Wrapping paper is the only paper texture I've never cut myself on. So, I, I'm just... Girl, I don't, I don't get it. Once again, they're having a conversation about whether or not Edward's gonna turn her into a vampire, and he doesn't want to. He wants her to grow old. But then he also told her about the Volturi, and how he's like, if I ever need to kill myself, I'm just gonna trigger them. And it's like, what are you gonna do when, say everything goes set like Edward's plan where she lives out her days as an old woman and it's like, what are you gonna do when she dies of old age? Like you're just gonna kill yourself? Like you don't want her to die because you can't live without her, but you want her to live to an old age, but what are you gonna do when 98 year old Bella dies? I don't know. So we're gonna keep reading because when we're only on page 30, the goal is page 100, maybe 200. That's not gonna happen, but it's a, it's a goal. And I'll check back in with you guys. So it's the next day and I'm on chapter 5 I believe. I just got too tired yesterday so I didn't want to keep reading. But 
You know how I was complaining how like Edward is wants Bella to live her full life and yet it's like what do you expect her to do when she lives that full life? Die and you said you're, you said so yourself you're gonna kill yourself if she dies. So we finally got an explanation and it's because he believes vampires don't have souls and he wants Bella to keep her soul. So again religion is brought up into this book. Um, Carlisle believes in religion. Also Carlisle was describing like the day he turned Edward because it was Edward's mom that enforced the idea because she was dying and like it was strongly hinted that she knew his secret um edward had beautiful green eyes apparently and bella gushed about that and as carla was talking about it i was like oh i'm kind of like falling in love with you didn't fall in love with him when i was younger but now all right let's go but yeah edward is moping about what happened he leaves bella bella's dumb and runs into the forest and gets lost and sam saves her and it was weird because she's like yeah sam is not familiar to me and i'm like don't you remember the beach in the last book he was there which is probably done on purpose but still charlie because you know how there's like four pages and each page is just october november december january so now it's january um her friends aren't really speaking to her charlie wants her to go live with her mom she think he thinks it would be better for her so she decides to go see a movie with jessica who's really mad at bella for being so socially distant and i have mixed views on that because at, at like on the one hand it's like dude everyone grieves differently you can't blame Bella for being that upset on the other it's been four months and yeah it can come across as rude when you don't talk to your friends they went to go see a movie Bella recognized these four guys and went to go talk to them but Jessica's freaking out because they're kind of crazy not crazy they're kind of they're kind of creepy Bella didn't recognize them turns out it was different guys uh, they ate, and now Jessica's mad at Bella for putting their life in danger like that. But I was expecting that scene to be more intense than it was. It was still bad and shitty for Bella to do that, but like, I don't know why I remember her actually like getting on the motorcycle with the guy. Maybe it's because of the movie. Four months later, she's still moping over a guy she dated for only like six months. Low-key relatable, because I've been there. It didn't take me four months to get over it, but like, yeah, I was moping for a guy I dated for six months. I feel you, Bella. I kind of have to defend you on that one. I'm on page 120. Today's goal was 200. I don't know if I'm getting there because I'm getting ramen tonight and I'm very excited about that. I haven't had this place before. Hey guys, so it's been three days. I haven't picked up the camera because I was not having a good time. About three days ago, I woke up really angry for no reason. Do you ever have those days where you're just angry and you don't know why? But then something happens so it like proves your anger. So I didn't want to pick up the camera because of that. And then for like the past two days, um, my OCD has been through the fucking roof. One of my obsessions was getting worse. So so therefore the compulsions were getting worse. It's on it's on the low, it's on the down low today. So that's why I'm picking up the camera now. But I was reading. So we've been reintroduced to Jacob. And we're currently at the part where he's sick, so he's not visiting Bella. She has come across Laurent and five wolves, five big wolves, and she doesn't know who they are yet. She just thinks they're scary and wants to stay away. I have no thoughts other than the movie really plays up the whole Team Jacob thing. See, the movies are just so prevalent in my mind that it's what I remember rather than the actual tone that the books have. Because I remember when she fell off the motorcycle and, you know, it was a huge thing when Jacob took his shirt off and, you know, they had that moment of staring at each other and we're all like, oh my god, are they gonna kiss? Yeah, he took his shirt off in the book, but it was just, here, have the shirt. There was nothing, like, romantic about it. I really forgot how much the movies up the ante when it came to Team Edward, Team Jacob. Because in the books, I don't I don't think it's that prevalent. Um, do I have anything else to say about that? Not really, other than that, their friendship is actually really cute. And I am, in this book, I am liking Jacob a lot better than Edward maybe controversial I don't know but I was team I was team Jacob growing up I wish we were introduced to Quill and Embry more because we saw them and then like two pages later Jake was like yeah Embry doesn't talk to us anymore he talks to Sam and I wish I just wish there was more development there so we could see why Jacob's so angry about that because I'm just like we saw him once I don't really care that he switched sides you know Bella still doesn't fucking remember that Sam was in the first book like at the beach but yeah, she's like, no, I don't remember who Sam is. And the scene where Mike got sick at the theater, that was pretty funny. But yeah, so that's where we're at. She saw the wolves. She was really scared. That's it. So I'm going to read now. I made some coffee. I will say that I finally finished watching Legend of Korra. The ending was not as much of a punch in the gut as Avatar The Last Airbender. 
Which makes sense because Avatar The Last Airbender, its plot spanned out all three seasons, whereas Legend of Korra had a new plot for each season. But visually, and musically, visually, it was so, so stunning. We, we love it. People sleep on animation, and I don't get it. And musically, like, they played some of Avatar's love at the end, and I cried. And tonight, I'm going to rewatch Penny Dreadful. I'm so excited. I, someone on Twitter mentioned that it was canceled too soon. So it reawakened the obsession I had with that show, because y'all fucking slept. Slept on Penny Dreadful. That show is so, so good. Okay, hi, guess who's really bad at picking up the camera lately? So a few updates. I have read two chapters since then, and we find out that Jacob is indeed a werewolf. It is less dramatic, again, less dramatic than the movies. I forgot how dramatic the movies make everything to be. Because I think in the movie she like pissed someone off and then someone went into the wolf form. Jacob was just like, first of all, went to her room. Jacob was just like, I can't tell you, but you can guess it. And then she dreamt about it, and that's how she guessed. And then they just had a conversation. Turns out the wolves are not the murderers. Uh, Victoria is. Victoria's back. Bella's freaking out. Jacob just found out that Edward can mind read. And we learn in New Moon that the wolves can mind read as well. So right now they're just going to the pack to have a talk with them. They don't know that Bella's there just yet. And that's it. I'm just not in the mood to read, which is sad, because I want to get the main series done before September ends, because as soon as it's October 1st, I'm going to pause Twilight and get reading it, because if I don't read it this year, then there goes my big book of the year. I have watched, I watched two movies last night. I watched Silence of the Lambs for the first time. That was really good. That was my first time seeing Hannibal Lecter in action. And then I watched a Netflix horror movie called Apostle, starring Michael Sheen, so Aro, and it was horrible. It was a terrible movie. It was so boring. Uh, it was horror, but like in the sense where there's a lot of gruesome acts and that was the horror aspect. Nothing like no jump scares, no psychological thrillers, whatever. So I'm going to watch Penny Dreadful. I'm going to try to finish season one. I only have three episodes left and then I will get to reading. So an update that I wasn't going to do, but Mike just pissed me off. So Bella has met the other werewolf. She has met Emily and it was strongly inferred that Emily got attacked by Sam when Sam was in wolf form. That relationship like just doesn't sit right with me. When I was younger I thought it was oh my god so romantic that Emily stuck by him because she just knew. Like older now uh, that it does that mm -mm, that relationship doesn't sit right with me. I know Sam imprinted on her and all that but but still, and there's still other like remarks about the Native Americans in that chapter that was a, that was very uncomfortable with. But they all decided they're going to protect Bella from Victoria because, I mean, they have to. That's their job. But in the next chapter, I'm only two paragraphs in, and Jacob followed Bella to work, and Mike still remembers Jacob, and he's like, you know he likes you, and Bella's like, I know, but it's not like that. Boys are weird. Love is complicated. And then Mike was like, and girls are cruel, and like looked away and gave her attitude, and I'm like, bro, Bella has made it so fucking clear she doesn't like you like that leave her alone mike is annoying oh my god he's more annoying in this book than he was in the last book so just finished the chapter where bella jumped off a cliff and she's basically drowning because she didn't pay attention to the fact she's jumping into like a fucking body of water i don't know if it's a lake or an ocean Either way, lakes can be intense too, so it doesn't even have to be an ocean, it could be a lake. What I do want to talk about is the fact that I think we need to mention that Bella is kind of suicidal in this book, if we're thinking about it, like the whole like cliff thing. First of all, the fact that she wants to do that when she has like no training, she knows how dangerous it is, part of her has to be suicidal. I'm not saying that to be sarcastic, like part of her has to know like that was not gonna work out and we don't talk about that. Also, the fact that she's hallucinating Edward throughout this whole book kind of concerns me now that I'm older because I'm like, isn't that a sign of some mental illness that should be talked about? But we kind of ignore that. So just things I thought about while reading that chapter. Bella's... Ugh. Also, going back to the suicidal note, she's okay with dying. She hears Edward's voice. She's like, bye, I love you. You're just proving to me that I really want to die because I can't live without you. That is something that we need... That is like a mental that is an aspect i can't even talk because i'm so angry that is an aspect of mental health we should talk about but we don't like if you're willing to die for someone like that just because they broke up with you girls got issues that she needs to sort out that's all i'm saying on a lighter note this scene actually is a great song i think it's called slow talk i know the band is grizzly bear so i think it's slow talk by grizzly bear 
now it's stuck in my head. So I'm gonna go listen to it, and then I'll continue reading. And I'm really excited, cause mm, she gets a visitor. And then I mean, it, it not literally gets a visitor, but she that chapter ends with her seeing a visitor in her house, and we all know who it is. Favorite character. We love to see it. So excited. I am past page 400, which is fine. 400 was my goal for the day. I don't know if I'm gonna keep reading, but I will update you guys on where I'm at. So the visitor was Alice. Who else would it be? And Alice is really frustrated because she saw Bella jump, but she didn't see Bella get saved, and she's really confused why she couldn't see Jacob. And then this takes place in a matter of like three days, like these next two chapters, when in the movie it's only like, in like reality, maybe like 30 minutes. So I, I forgot about this, but the next morning, uh, Alice is talking to Charlie, and Charlie's very understandably angry about what Edward did to Bella, and, you know, Alice is updating him on that situation, and kind of just telling him what he wants to hear, except when he makes a comment about Edward, like, oh, I hope he's enjoying himself, and Alice is like, uh, I wouldn't assume things, and then it's, like, day three of Alice being there, or actually, it was still day two, and Alice is, like, updating Bella on her life, so... She went to an asylum, as we've discussed in the last book. She discovered her real name was Mary Alice Brandon. She had a sister named Cynthia, whose niece still lives in Biloxi, Mississippi. So Alice is from Mississippi. There's no, they have no idea why Alice was sent there. But from what I remember of the illustrated guide, it was because her visions would scare people so much. So they thought she was like a witch or something. Uh, Alice found her grave and her day of death. Well, she was looking through newspapers, first of all. She found her birth and her death, which made her uncomfortable. And her day of death is the same as her asylum admission papers. So, poor Alice. And then it's day three, and right now Bella was cleaning, but someone rang the doorbell, and they this is when they discover that Alice cannot see werewolves in her future seeing senses. So Alice pieces out the window, and then the doorbell rings again. It's obviously Jacob, but that's just how the chapter ended. Things are picking up. I read this chapter faster than the other chapters. The other ones were kind of kind of dragging and that's why I just could not get myself to read this book but Alice is back that means they're gonna go to the Volturi things are gonna pick up we love to see it um I'm hungry and I have to pee I chugged down coffee like way too fast and I was holding it <laughs> holding it so I could read the book so I'm gonna go pee and then I'm gonna eat watch Penny Dreadful because I finished season one last night so I want to start season two tonight and we'll see from there now that I like got to where I want to be the rest of the night is just gonna be super chill myself a schedule that goes on until September 30th. It is currently September 13th. I was supposed to finish New Moon two days ago according to the schedule. I still have over 100 pages left because I just cannot get myself to read this fucking book for the life of me. So what have I been doing instead? My mom went away on a little vacation. She's visiting family on the other side of the state. So it was just me and my dad. So I did the cooking because dad can't cook to save his life. And then we just watched some movies. I got a job, by the way. I have a job. I start at the end of September. The movie we watched was The Lighthouse starring Robert Pattinson. And although it has beautiful framing and the acting is amazing and, you know, I got all the... I got all the metaphorical language in that movie, like I got all the Moby Dick references and the Prometheus stuff, but um, apparently I am of the unpopular opinion that that movie is boring as hell. I was falling asleep. My dad fell asleep halfway through, luckily, I guess, because at one point we get a side view of Robert, Robert Pattinson's penis, and I was like, oh, okay, awkward time. Like, you ever watch a movie with your parent and then, like, the unexpected sex scene comes up and you're kind of just like, don't look at me, this is awkward, you know, you feel. And then I just watched, uh, five episodes of Penny Dreadful last night. I'm constantly thinking about how much y'all fucking slept on that show and I have not forgiven a single one of you because it is great and I want more people to watch that show. It's on Netflix. America's Netflix, at least. I don't know about the other part of the world. What have I read of New Moon? Alice came back. Did I mention that already? I don't know. But she's back. Oh, I did mention that. Yeah. So she gets a vision that Edward uh, wants to kill himself because he thought Bella killed herself. And the story goes that Rosalie... So Alice sees something. She tells people. Rosalie told Edward Bella's dead. She's obviously wrong. Alice yelled at her. She's like, save your remorse for someone else. And I was like, oh, fucking tea. And then when her and Bella are on their way to leave for Italy, Jacob is not as dramatic as he is in the movie. 
I don't know why the movie made everything so much more dramatic than it is the book, because I feel like Stephanie Meyer gets so much flack for that. Like, I remember one of the critiques a lot of people who, you know, hated Twilight growing up. Like, they say that, like, the movies are so dramatic, but that's, like, now that I'm rereading the books, I'm like, okay, that's not on Stephanie Meyer, because Stephanie Meyer did not write these as dramatic as the movies made them out to be. But then they're on the airplane, her and Alice just talking. Aro said no to Edward, I will not kill you because I like your mind reading skills. So Edward's trying to figure out a way to expose himself and piss off, piss off the Volturi, and they're making it to Volterra now. I had to look up if Volterra was real, and it is. It's a town in Tuscany. So, I don't know. I I remember knowing it was real, but for some reason I don't know why I was like second-guessing myself, but it is a real town. I have been to Tuscany. I have been to the Tuscan region, but I've only been to Siena and Florence. I did not get to see Volterra. That's all my commentary, though. I don't really have a lot. I kind of just want to keep reading so I can get this book done. I filmed... I did watch... Okay, I did watch Mockingjay Part 1 yesterday. Um, and I filmed that reaction and I'm really pissed off because half of my fucking footage is out of focus because my camera was having a field day. The lighting was really weird yesterday because it was storming. So I don't know what I'm going to do and I don't know what video is going out first. This one or that one. My Catching Fire one has over 1100 views right now and I was like, my channel has like 150 subscribers. I was expecting like two views, but here we are and this has nothing to do with New Moon so I'm going to get to reading it. It's the only way in. She tried to soothe me. She tried to soothe me, what? So our girl Bella has saved the day, kind of. She stopped Edward from stepping out. He thought he died. He thought he was in hell, basically, but whatever. So it took Bella a while to convince him this is all real. We meet Felix and Dimitri of the Volturi. Alice comes in. Jane comes in. I forgot how young Jane actually is in these books. She's only like 12, 13, and you cannot convince me that Dakota Fanning is 12 or 13 in these movies. Which makes me a little upset because New Moon came out when I was in 7th grade, so I was 12, right? 7th grade? Because I was 6th grade when the first movie came out, so I had to be like 7th, 8th grade when New Moon came out. I was 12 in 7th grade. They, they could have casted me because Jane is described to be as short as Alice. Alice is only like 4'10". I'm 5'1". That's three inches that's three inches taller. I could I could have been Jane. Missed opportunity. My acting career is gone because they didn't come to me. But whatever. Dakota Fanning did a great job besides being like too old. But I also understand why they had to age up Jane in the movies, because there's probably there's like no way she would have not aged as the movies went on, whereas Dakota Fanning was just at the age where you could hide it with makeup. If that made any sense at all. Alice said a really funny comment. She was like, Oh yeah, Bella jumped off the cliff. But it wasn't to kill herself. Bella is all about extreme sports these days, and you know, we love Alice. I wish the movies made the Volturi more secretive in the book. Like, they're hiding in the shadows of an alley. They jump down a hole and, like, walk underground in secret tunnels. Yeah, I forget the next couple lines, but uh, then it goes. Secret tunnel! Secret tunnel! And yeah, so the chapter ends when they walk into the room where I'm assuming the main three are. So, what a fucking time. Now Secret Tunnel's gonna be stuck in my head. This is great. What time is it? It is 1.22 in the morning. I'm gonna read one more chapter because I'm kind of wide awake. So I don't remember if the Volturi speaks Italian in the movie, but I like that they do in the book. La tua cantante just means your singer. Aro started to laugh. Ha ha ha, he chuckled. Award-winning writing right here. Award-winning literature. Beats it all. So the verdict is in. They get to live. The chapter began with Bella seeing a grate in the middle of the floor, and I was like, wait, I've read these books before. That's foreshadowing, but we're not there yet. Aro thought it was amazing that Edward couldn't use his powers on her. Aro couldn't use his powers on her. Jane can't use her powers on her, which was like a huge thing. Aro's hilarious. We love him. He asked Alice to join them. She said no, and I forgot how much Aro really liked Alice. And then he asked Bella, and Bella's freaking out like, oh my god, you're asking to stay for dinner, when in reality, it was because Aro thought she had huge prospects as a vampire and wanted her to join the Volturi. But Caius didn't like that idea. Caius was like, oh, she knows too much, She's we can't just let her go, the other two vampires could go. He told them, like, Edward and Alice, you can go, but Bella needs to stay so we can kill her because she's a vulnerability. Edward understandably freaked out, but then Alice, less dramatic than the movie, because in the movie she was like, wait, and this is, did this whole little speech 
Whereas in the book, she, without a word, she just stepped forward, gave Aura her hand because she saw a vision of Bella being a vampire, which Aura was very pleased with because he didn't want to piss off Carlisle. That made Aura again comment like, it's a shame you're not staying with us, but hopefully in the future you come to us, which makes me wonder, like, long after the series takes place, if like, like say like 200 years later, what if something happens to Jasper, would she go to the Volturi? Like that makes... Where's the fan fiction? Is there fan fiction out there? As they're leaving, a whole bunch of humans come and suddenly the grate in the middle of the floor makes sense because it's the feeding it. Because I think somewhere in the chapter two, Edward was scared. He's like, you brought us to this room. That means you're going to kill us. And it's like, what? And then Aurel's like, no, we're just waiting for Heidi to come. Heidi comes with humans, so it's their feeding room. And the chapter ends as they're all screaming. The grate makes sense because I'm sure that's where all the leftover blood goes. Makes me wonder where the bodies go. How do you get rid of the bodies and how do they like... I mean, I'm thinking too much into this by now, but it's like, how do, when you take all these humans, what happens to their families at home when they don't come back? That's my question. Bella is screaming and crying in the next chapter, freaking out that she had to hear that. I mean, I would be too, so I don't blame her. Bella, or Edward's trying to calm her, and then, and then Alice says, in all serious, and like, just in a flat voice, she's like, I think she's having hysterics. Maybe you should slap her. <laughs> Which, very on brand, makes me love her so much. I think she's hilarious. And another really cute part happened because Alice had to steal another car to get to the airport and she was upset that it's not the Porsche and uh, Edward said, maybe I'll get you one for Christmas. And she turned around beaming. I love their sibling relationship. Oh, she told him it had to be yellow too. I love their sibling relationship, but it... I was shocked to find out that Alice was 19 when she was bit because, I don't know, they're like sibling dynamic. I always, always thought Alice was the younger sister. It just might be because she's really short, but like, because you know, like shorter people are always perceived to be younger. Then they get back to Seattle and Alice had a moment with Jasper. Okay, big question though, because she calls him on the plane. I always thought cell phones don't work that high up in the air, but maybe that's just me and I'm really stupid and slow. But she talks to him on the phone in the plane, but then at the airport they have a moment and she's staring into his eyes and Bella's like, it's so private, I have to look away. And I'm like, ah, oh, Jasper and Alice forever, OTP. I love them so much. It's been over a decade and I still love them. And then the chapter ends with Bella getting home and Charlie is understandably freaking out at Edward saying, how dare you show your face around here? And Charlie's so underrated. We love Charlie. But that's it. I have three chapters left. So that means I could finish this book today and get this vlog out and start Eclipse. I also love Alice because I remember like first reading that line, like, I think she's having hysterics. Maybe you should slap her because so much wasted potential in the movies. Alice is not as funny in the movies as she is in the books and I'm I'm kind of mad about that. <sighs> but that line's hilarious. I'm gonna steal it and like say it to people. I used to say it to my friends all the time and now I get to say it again because I've been reminded of the line. Well I finished this book and I have some thoughts you guys. I have a lot of notes because I finished it last night actually but I was like too tired to make a cohesive analysis I guess. So where were we? So there was that boring chapter when they return home and they're hanging out in Bella and Edward, or they're hanging out in Bella's room. And it's just a long, long chapter about their love and shit and how Edward was like, no, no, I did love you. All that shit in the forest was a lie. I was tracking Victoria. He did a horrendous job at it because he tracked her to Brazil. And I'm like, bro, she's in forks. Stupid shit like that. And how he basically told her like, you will be a human for the rest of your life. And she's like, no, no, we're going to ask your family to put it up to a vote. And Edward's like, their opinion doesn't matter, but I think it does matter. Honestly, I thought Bella was the smarter of the two in this situation because with the whole, like, Volturi thing and Victoria, his family is now involved. Like, it's not just the two of them. So Bella wanted to get their opinion because she knows they're involved and she wants to protect them because Bella's like, either way, I'm going to fucking die. So might as well be like the undead. So I was with Bella on this. Honestly, I thought she was more mature because Edward just ignored his family, which is another thing I want to talk about because in that long ass boring chapter, Bella, because you know how in the beginning of the video I was like, what does Edward expect to happen when she dies of natural causes? So Bella brought that up. She's like, I'm going to die anyway. And then Edward said, and hopefully I will follow soon, which kind of doesn't sit right with me. But also, like, you're gonna put your family through that. Like, your family will miss you. They don't want you to die either. They don't want Bella to die. To, like, make a long story short, again, I'm with Bella on this. I think she is less selfish. And Edward is kind of selfish because he's ignoring that his family is now involved and in danger. So there's the vote chapter. And then uh, Edward had the great plan because Dimitri's a tracker, but he tracks with your mind. And, you know, they can't get into Bella's mind. 
So he's like, yeah, when Dimitri comes, we'll just throw him off course and hide Bella. And him, it was like, it was just stupid. And the way him and his brothers were all laughing about it, but then all the girls were like, uh-uh, like, Rosalie, like, she basically called them unbelievable, and Bella agreed with her. Alice gl Alice called them idiots, and then Esme just glared at them. Yeah, it was it was really fucking weird. It's one of my folded down pages because I thought the line itself was kind of hilarious. Like that the the interaction between the woman I thought was hilarious. Rosalie was the only one besides Edward, obviously. Rosalie was the only one to say no to the vote, and I kind of uh, you know I understand that because Rosalie explained herself. She's like, this is not the life I wanted, and I wish someone was there to say no for me. So you know I understand it. Like I get it because everyone was against Edward. Edward was really pissy and moany about it, like a typical 17-year-old boy. He was exceptionally, he was especially mad because Carlisle took Bella's side, like, Carlisle basically told him, like, dude, it's really stupid to keep her human at this point. So he goes to the other room and breaks shit, like, how, come on, how old are you? I mean, he's 17, but like, bro. Um, Bella, Bella turned to Alice, she's like, where are we gonna do this? And Alice is understandably panicking, she's like, what the fuck? And even I, like, even as I was reading this, I was like, holy fuck, girl, that's like right away, I wasn't expecting it to be that soon. Bella's like, you promise? And Alice is like, I mean, I guess. But also, let's think about when Alice said it, she said it during a time of panic on an airplane, and it was more as a side comment and not something Bella should have taken seriously. So then they go back to Bella's room. And they're just chilling, and then Edward's trying to talk her out of being a vampire, so he makes a condition, which is to marry him. For whatever reason, Bella doesn't want to get married to him. I always thought this was weird, how she was, like, willing to be a vampire for the rest of her life, but God forbid she got married. Edward needs to think of a better proposal, like, the propo all he did was just lay in bed, say, oh, just marry me then, and, like, that belongs in the Facebook group, I'm, that's it, I'm proposal shaming, which if you're not a part of, you should, it's, like, fucking hilarious. But if th that's where I would post it, so he needs to think of something better. And as for the epilogue, Jacob's a fucking dick. He wanted to get Bella in trouble, didn't want her to see Edward, so he purposely tried to ground her, or purposely tried to get her grounded by telling Charlie about the motorcycle. Bro, you were like sworn to secrecy. What a fucking dick. I don't know why I was still Team Jacob when I was younger at this point, but like now... Like he did that to you and you still want to... I mean, I, c I can understand being friends, because like... Friend, I think we all have an example in our heads when we did something shitty to our friends and like they forgave us and they did something shitty to us and we forgave them. But like the fact that he's still part of a love triangle, like friends I can forgive, but a love triangle, he did that to you and you... I don't get it. Um, the end was really sappy and not really grim, but she was like nervous and that's the, that's the book. That's the book. So final thoughts, I'm gonna try to keep this quick because one, the camera's dying, two, you guys don't need to hear me ramble. But Jacob's mockery of the culture. I mentioned in the last video that I was like hesitant to use the word mockery, but like the longer I thought about it, the more I was like, no, he was, he was mocking. And he kept doing it in this book, even after he already accepted the culture and that he is a wolf, he would just oddly mock it in a way I don't know how to describe. It just didn't sit well with me. I've noticed, once Miss Meyer finds a word that she likes to use, she will keep using it. There's so much murmuring in this book, so much sighing. Jacob has russet skin, if you haven't noticed. She's constantly using the word russet, and it's like, okay, I got that when you used it on page 200. But you keep using it. I don't need to know that on page 500. I'm pretty sure her skin color doesn't change. I learned that her uh, characters were named after siblings. Emily, Heidi, both of which make short appearances and I'm still, it's still not sitting well the whole Emily-Sam dynamic. Still does not sit well with me. Heidi is in the Volturi. Um, Seth is a werewolf. Who else did she use? Jacob is a brother. Paul, who's another werewolf. So she, she thanked them in the acknowledgments for using their names. Um, we have similar music tastes. She listens to Muse, Brand New, My Chemical Romance. I listen to those bands. Like, people always say, like, are you a La Dispute depressed or are you a Brand New depressed? High school, I was a La Dispute depressed. Now I'm a Brand... <laughs> college, I was a Brand New depressed. Like, early college. Jasper and Alice Forever. I love them. Their little moment in the airport. Super cute. My question is, because I learned... I did not learn this reading the books, I learned this through the Twilight Illustrated Guide that Alice was 19 when she was bit. Does anyone get the vibes that they treat her like a baby sister? Like 15? Maybe not 15's definitely pushing it, but I always thought she was like mentally like 16, 17. Because Edward treats her like a baby sister and I don't know, everyone just, she gives me baby sister vibes, Bella treats her like a baby sister sometimes. And it's like, I mean, I remember how like Carlisle and Esme would look at Alice in the first book, like whenever she got near Bella, 
they would kind of freak out. But they could just be freaking out because she's a vampire. I don't know. But I get baby sister vibes from Alice when she's older than... She's physically and mentally, I guess. She's older than Edward and Rosalie because Edward's 17, Rosalie's 18, Alice is 19. And yeah, I get baby sister vibes. And she's still in high school with Edward, which I, I'm always wondering how that dynamic worked out. Like, why some of them were in the year above while the others were not. And that's it. Those are my final thoughts. Um, this book, I still like, it took me longer to read than Twilight, but I still like this better than Twilight. I wish we could go more into the Volturi. Her side characters are just so much better than Bella and Edward. Wasted opportunity. I think I will just leave it at that. Let me know your comments down below. If you like this video, subscribe, comment, like the video. And I think without further ado, I'm just gonna peace out, so I will see you guys later. Ciao, Tutti!